everyone, it's Michelle Lightworker here and welcome to another Enlightened Conversation. Today I have a beautiful special guest on my show. Now, Jessica Vidal Johnson is actually a beautiful friend and a wonderful soul of light on this planet. And it is my absolute pleasure to have her gracing the cover of Lightworker Advocate magazine for our December 2016 seasonal um, issue. We've just moved to a seasonal issue, which is really awesome. So it's summer in Australia or it's winter in the United States and UK. So wherever you are in the world, but this beautiful being is gracing the cover of Lightworker Advocate magazine. I had the pleasure of interviewing Jessica for the magazine and also for my radio show that I had with A1R Psychic Radio. And we did a, um, an interview um, for Enlightened Conversations. And it didn't work because we, I was still sorting out the technical stuff. So this is kind of cool that we've got the technical stuff working and I've had all these wonderful interactions. Thank you, Spirit. There's always a reason why Spirit sends through problems with technology and things like that. So. I had the absolute blessing and privilege of connecting with Jessica repeatedly over the past few weeks, which has been an absolute joy. And I can't wait to share my joy with you. I want to officially invite her into this conversation and I'll just introduce her so that you know a bit more about Jessica. So Jessica is a very gifted psychic medium and through her soul name, Astria, is well known for her Palladian princess and Acturian lives. Hopefully I'm getting all the pronunciations. <laughs> okay, but anyway, the energy behind them is, is there. She's very excited to share with you all a message about love. And that's very much the topic of what I'm guided to really talk about today. So it's going to be interesting. She's worked as a psychic detective, paranormal investigator, starseed, light healer, star transformation energy worker, Holy Fire and Reiki Master, sorry, Angel Reiki Master, and of course, a light worker. Her intuitive abilities have helped many, and we are honoured, as I said, we're so excited as well to have her here to speak with us today. Hi, Jessica. Hi, thank you. The honour is mine. I'm really excited to be here to connect with all of you. So this is amazing. Yeah, and I just love the way Spirit works in getting us together because, um, you know, and, and it was kind of interesting because, oh, wow, like having had the interactions I've had with you over the past few weeks and the topics that have been coming up and everything that's been going on out there in the world, and it just feels for me, it feels like it's a really important time to acknowledge that um, the, the, the kind of energy that we share, which is really, really about how we can love big, I feel like that's the message coming through, um, is, is really required, like for people to actually understand more of that, how we do that. Um, uh, and yeah, we'll talk about that today. So, uh, well, that's what I feel called to talk about today. I mean, you might feel called to talk about something completely different and that would be fine. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you're right, though. It's such an exciting time to be on the planet. And it's going to definitely, everything that's happening now, is going to mean the whole history of Earth. So it's so exciting to be here for the shift. And I love it. Loving big. Absolutely. That is the message that I bring across to everyone. And it all starts with self. Loving self. Yeah, it does. And yeah, absolutely. And you know, the thing that really came through strongly for me this morning was the, it's, it's easy to love uh, other people, like um, our friends, our family, like our partner, uh, our kids, um, nice people out there, perhaps that are doing good work in the community. It's easy to love when people are kind, when they're doing what we want, when, you know, they're behaving in a way that we deem generous and, and, and service oriented, I guess, but it's harder to love when people are in, in their unconsciousness. I guess that's the word I want to refer to rather than in their judgment or in their hate or in their, yeah. you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, you know, and a lot of times we put so many conditions on loving our children, on loving our family, on loving other people that it's only when they're acting in a way that we agree with that we love them. But in truth, you know, anything that is said to us by anyone, whether it's a child, a family member, it's a reflection of something that's going on inside of us. 
And so to improve all relationships, loving yourself, which is, you know, really taking a big step forward in putting yourself first and unconditionally loving yourself, not just loving yourself when you are a certain weight or loving yourself when you get a certain grade, but through every moment and every day, unconditionally loving, accepting and forgiving yourself. So. Yeah, I agree. And it's, it's one of those things where I, I, the information is, is very fresh and I'm, I'm really excited to share this with you because I got it this morning. Often I get it this mo in the morning when I'm doing my jog and that kind of thing. And it did come through this morning. And the message that I got, I was having a conversation um, with um, Archangel Michael, Jesus and Buddha because they, they're kind of like my three that I usually have, but I often get more guides coming in like indigenous guides but this morning i just had the three um that you know they were saying to me um that a lot of the time we think we need to kind of um almost pity another person for their behavior or their hate or their unconsciousness like we go to that extreme um rather than come into heart space and and, and drop into compassion like when it's a when we know that we've acted out, like in our unconsciousness, you know, what you're saying about loving the self, for me, it would be like, okay, you know, extending compassion to the part of me that acted unconsciously and loving that part and, and forgiving that part. And even if someone else can't, you know, so that's the, that's the, absolutely. that's the big job. Yes. And it, absolutely. I totally agree with that. And when we are living in our hearts and connected with the unconditional love that connects us to all of humanity, you know, it makes it a little bit easier to be compassionate to ourselves because we can't be compassionate to anyone else until it starts here first. Yeah, and it's almost like I see people sliding into pity. Um, you know, um, and this is the message that was coming through for me is, is that um, it's not about pitying people that are unconscious. It's actually really about finding a place in us that doesn't do, do this because that's spiritual arrogance. Mm -hmm. And it's about coming into equality, which is very much the heart space, which is very much about unity um, and, and coming to this place where we go, I have that unconscious part of me. How big am I loving that part of me right now? And mm -hmm. you're right, because if we, if we haven't really transcended that bridge internally between us and ourselves, we can't extend that out to people that are behaving erratically, unconsciously, uh, violently, abusively, you know, we can't at that moment in time. Absolutely. And I remember when I came to you a long time ago in 2012, and you told me about shadow integration and loving those darker, even the most inner hurt parts of myself. And so, yes, by with using unconditional love for even the darkest, most judgmental parts of yourself, you can transmute all of those issues that you've carried in your subconscious for so long back into love and light, which is a process that everyone, you know, it's definitely about taking responsibility for your own darkness, your own, you know, baggage, I guess, that you carry through many lifetimes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I feel like it's, um, you know, uh, all the darkness um, out there that 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 um, that we see or we or we deem as being bad, um, wrong, all that stuff. I feel like it's cataclysmic, and it's an opportunity for us to do the inner work we need to. Because the thing that I see with enlightened um, behaviour and choices is that it's usually not caught up in what people aren't doing right. It's usually much more proactive. It's, it's much more on the trajectory of, okay, what am I contributing? How am I taking responsibility? What's my next step up? And it's usually that stuff that, that actually becomes a great service to the world, yeah? Yes, absolutely, because it's so necessary. It's, you know, we live on a planet of duality and we have that duality within us. And the more that we work on, you know, what we deem to be negative or what we're perceiving to be negative or in the dark, the more we learn and the further we evolve. So it's very, it may not feel good in the moment, you know, and it may be something that causes fear to come up towards facing it. But when you do the work, I mean, there, it's like, there's nothing in the world more worth that. And that's like really coming from a place of loving yourself so much that you want to heal those parts of you. So it's, 
it's all a learning experience. But if we're all just like in rainbows and sunshine all the time, we wouldn't be forced to look at our problems. Exactly. And so then it's, it's, yeah, exactly. I mean, I guess I have a bit of a rainbows and sunshine approach to perceived problems in the, in a way, because I, the minute a problem hits, um, I'm, I'm, I'm often excited that spirit sent me something to, as a lesson to learn. And so automatically, I mean, rainbows and sunshines, uh, it might feel uncomfortable too, but there's a part of me that's going, oh, oh, an opportunity. Oh, what's this all about? You know, there's a, there's an excitement around, um, I must be ready for something. It's a compliment. I don't see it as a non-compliment anymore or a, what's this, yeah. you know, that old, yeah, that I agree. Old sort of it, I agree. It causes so much gratitude. Like, thank you for showing me that I have something to work on. Yeah, absolutely. I'm ready for this. You know, instead of that whole, oh, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening again? Why does this always happen? And there's that, such a different energy around that, isn't there? It's just so different to, cool, okay, there's this opportunity for growth. I wonder what it is. It's excitement. It's curious. And it's, there's, a difference, there's a difference of energy around it. It's a lighter energy, a lot of lightness around that. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, the moment that we go into playing the victim in our lives, we immediately disempower ourselves and then feed into that fear-based emotion of, oh, oh, this poor me, this is happening to me again, rather than looking at it through, I would say, like a rose of love, like a lens of unconditional love and going, ah, well, maybe this didn't feel so good, but at least it's brought to my attention now so I can love myself, love myself so much unconditionally for the times that have caused this issue to arise you know, then and love myself now and therefore transforming the issue or whatever, you know, and it could be something that someone says to us that really hurts us, you know, um, because we can only draw into our experience what we're a vibrational match for. So I just love that little sentence that you said before, transforming the issue. I mean, that's, that sums it up for me. I actually feel like our attitude straight off the bat towards the issue is that's the first like moment if we're looking at mindfulness and we're looking at being present that's the first moment in time that we go hmm how am I looking at this situation right now like as the issue you know and it's kind of like helps us to witness how we approach um issues before we dive into them because often the issues themselves uh, are a work in progress for us. Like we, we're working through our shit, you know, we're working through our baggage, we're working through our shadow, we're working through what's ours, what's theirs. You know, it's, it's, it, can be, it can be a whole ball of, you know, yarn that we, yeah. that we need to untangle but the, 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 and find our place in it. But the attitude towards the ball of yarn, I think is the first step to really loosening the yarn itself um, like you were saying, transforming the issue, transforming the yarn. <laughs> yeah. And, and to, you know, like I've realized that your perception on how you perceive a certain situation or a relationship, you know, the way that you perceive it is the way that it is. So when you can detach from your emotions and take a step backwards and look at the issue again with unconditional love, that's another way that, you know, changing your perception will actually make a shift in whatever's happening. So Yeah, definitely. I love that. And I think there's power in that. I, I feel like um, people don't perhaps realise how much power there is in that because they're so caught up in diving straight into the issue, perhaps head on or whatever. But the higher self will always yeah, take the approach of, firstly, the issue presenting is a gift. Have you yet to unwrap it, you know, to see... Well, how this is a gift, yeah. Um, but for me, it's very much a gift that, you know, um, just because we can't see the actual gift per se doesn't mean it's not a gift. Um, have, I, have, I, have I still got you, Jessica? Your, your screen looks yeah, like... Yeah, I just cut out for like one second. Oh, cool, We're good. cool. We're good. Okay, so, um, so you heard about the gift, um, where you, to unwrap the gift. You heard, you heard all that? 
Well, yes. Got- yeah. And it's totally true because, you know, it's lessons that turn into blessings. Absolutely. And the great thing is we get to keep all of the wisdom and everything we learn from going through the struggle. Yeah, that's exactly right. And we carry that through our lifetimes. And I, I, I look at um, the, 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 I guess the globe, you know, we look at the earth and we look at the consciousness where we are, which is very much where I think you and I sit, you know, we can, we can kind of do that. We can go, um, okay, yeah, humanity is where it is right now. And there's no, there's no bad about it. Although a lot of people say, oh, it's so bad and da, da, da. But no, no, it's, it's actually on its trajectory exactly where it needs to be. Um, when you're working with beings from Pallades who, um, from, from things that you have shared with me, I understand that they can see that what we are actually going through right now is necessary for our consciousness changing. Then when you can look at it from that higher perspective, things aren't bad per se. They're just where they are sitting so what are, how are we going to come from a place of love about yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, being able to look at it that way because, you know, if we didn't go through what we deem to be bad or negative all, all over the planet, then how would we know that there needs to be a change, you know, a shift in consciousness, a shift in living in our heart and loving ourselves. So it's absolutely very, very necessary. And yeah, I'm excited for humanity because I know that, you know, we're going to do this. Absolutely. Um, there's more and more enlightened people coming to the surface during this time and love more than ever before on the planet is it's spreading through, through people. So it's a beautiful thing to watch. Yeah. I, I had um, something I wanted to run by you too. Um, you know, when people are a bit narky or a bit salty um, towards you, a bit curt or short or what have you, I think, it, I know that's just petty, but I think it's during those times across our day when those kind of things happen, like the bus driver's short to you or, you know, the person at the shop doesn't smile or the waitress that's serving you is, is acting bitchy or, do you know, it's those, those kind of little moments along the day that sometimes challenge us in the everyday to stay in a heart, in a compassion space. Um, and, you know, I, I guess I wanted to run something by you. How, do you maintain your connection with your heart space? What's the easiest tip you've got? I'm, I'm more than happy to share mine and, and things, but I, I'm really curious. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, oh, you just cut out a little bit. You there? We got you. Okay. Yeah. So, um, light language is one technique that I use to get me into my heart space. Another thing that I do is I focus on something that I unconditionally love for two minutes. And I, so what I do is I'll visualize my boyfriend and how much I love him and love being with him and how happy I am when I'm with him. And just by doing that, it raises my vibration so high that I drop immediately into my heart. And then I will invite my higher self forward into my consciousness so that I'm connected with my divinity. And every time when I do that, I drop my energy drops into my heart space as well. So that's one thing that I do. And, you know, it's amazingly beautiful, the system we have here on earth, because when I do get a look in public that I'm going, okay, well, what is that about? Um, a lot of it is karmatic. So it gives me the opportunity to clear the karma with the person and, or to, you know, and it could be something so small, like having a fly land on me to show me that I'm not connected in my divinity and in my power, you know? So it really, really is a beautiful system we have here that in every moment when we're in the now moment and in our, the present, you know, is when we're the most powerful and we're the happiest. Yeah, I agree. I I love that. Um, 
yeah and and for me um like it was actually shown to me today that usually if i'm coming from a place that's like head i i will find myself more thinking about the person's behavior do you know like i'll be mm-hmm. i'll be up in my head i'll be that's where my energy is that's where my that's where that's where i feel is active right but if i actually allow myself to go hmm I'm going to just drop into my heart space and I'm going to actually think like literally think from my heart space towards that person. Like let, let the heart think this one out, you know, and what the heart will usually say is something like they're hurting. They don't even realize they're being short. They're just hurting so much. And what the heart, the heart wisdom, like it just will know like exactly what's going on with that person but the head if I get caught up with the head and thinking what they've done you know you go over it like almost like post-traumatic stress disorder like PTSD Mm -hmm. you're redoing the event of how narky they were that they didn't smile or whatever and that happens to us as humans it does Mm -hmm. and I think that there's a moment in time where we can actually almost like soften soften our hard edges and and that I think then we bring something quite phenomenally magical, I think, to to that situation. The person may or may not feel it at the time, but I actually do feel that it does it does affect them. And maybe later on, after they've had the interaction with us, they do smile or they do have a, a different shift in their energy, perhaps. I think. But I love your light language, and um, if you feel that you want to share some, because See, that's, it's nice to have a light language shower. I'm just saying, or bath, <laughs> however you want to say. I love it. Um, I encourage anyone listening, if they, if you feel called to do this, Jess, uh, to, yeah, to really let yourself sink into that love energy, not think it, because Jessica, when she presents the light language to you it's not if you get caught up on words and trying to understand it in the head you miss the point but if you allow yourself to to, for that complete immersion you may experience some profound changes either in the moment or shortly after you listen to it so um i'm ready whenever you are jessica (laughs) and so i what i love about light language is it surpasses the ego and it speaks for my divinity to yours. So it's always understood and it's never misinterpreted and it brings forth such beautiful vibrations. And because it's interpreted through the consciousness and the heart, you know, what you were saying about them smiling afterwards, it's, it's, it just, I just like literally saw that we can connect the consciousness in our hearts to everyone else. And then the love energy will just flow straight to them. So I have a, light language transmission coming through for everyone that will help them to live more in the heart space and to unconditionally love themselves. Okay. Um Rana Antaka Sashna Um Telenata Ampala Om Naman Manahatma Manhatma Sishne Wantwanaka. That's beautiful, my God, I just got tingles everywhere <laughs> repeatedly. <laughs> Thank you. Interesting. Interesting, I got a lot of um off, sometimes I'll, I'll feel a real heart expansion, you know, like you can literally feel the heart just going bam, 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 and it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But this time I felt like almost like all my legs and like ting- were tingling repeatedly, like waves of tingles. And I, I feel like the message that's coming through for me is that I'm able to because I'm able to hold that space of love now more consistently, I can walk the love like my legs can walk the love 
on the planet in my actions and in my daily activities, not just feel it or talk it, but walk it. And yeah, that's what I feel the message was for me. So thank you so much. That was beautiful. Yes, you're very welcome. And yeah, and so like it helped to ground the energies too into the planet because when we are living in our heart space, and we are connected and every step we take you know we're both drawing energy up from the earth and sending when we get energy coming through the crown it's going into the earth as well so just by being here and being frequency keepers and holding such a high vibration we at every step we take we are lifting the vibration of the planet as well in a sense so agree 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 and i just want to celebrate with you that um, you know, you have really come such a humongously long way in such a short period of time. When I say that, it's like I'm not taking for granted your past lives. <laughs> <'Cause I'm sure. laughs> but um, what I mean by that is, you know, our first interaction back in 2012, and now here you are in 2016, you're so living your light and you're so committed to that journey. And I really want to encourage that anybody listening that thinks they have such a long way to go or what have you is just remember who you are, that you've brought in so much from previous past lives, from you, you are connected to source, you are in that immediate connection. So, um, you know, to really trust that you don't know how far you can come in such a short time and not to judge that process at all or judge how long it has taken you to get here in this lifetime don't judge any of that because when everything sort of serves us to awaken doesn't it and then it catches up with itself something can pop and unlock to where we unlock the wisdom of where we really need to be in this lifetime and i, I observed it with you I, I felt it on our first interaction actually jessica i felt yeah, the, the, the unlocking, I felt it. And I knew, I knew great things were going to happen for you. And they did very quickly after that, which is interesting. And I just want to say for people, just never like lose heart or faith when your life has been hard, because often it has taken that right to get to that point of. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I, Thank you. Yeah, it has been a wild ride, <laughs> a lot of change, but, you know, and a lot of loving myself and working on myself to get to where I am. But, you know, when we're doing what we love, we are in such a pure vibration that we really can only draw more of that to ourselves. And so, you know, no limitations. Don't, you know, the only thing that stops us in our lives is us because everything comes back to us. <laughs> and loving ourselves. And the more that we do what we love, you know, no matter what that is, you know, to help ourselves and help others, we can only be successful. There's, there's no other, there's no, you know, it's such a pure vibration that it raises us right into abundance and to unconditional love and into passion, which is so necessary. And then with passion, we get inspiration. So it's just a huge cycle of all of these beautiful energies. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Um, and also, I, I'm excited that you started your own channel um, on YouTube, where you are actually sharing a lot of your light language. I'm still crying from the, I've got my makeups running from the, um, <laughs> from the love transmission. I'm noticing my eyes are just <laughs> so happy. <laughs> happy tears. <laughs> I, I wanted to acknowledge you for really making yourself visible to the world because that's a big thing, I believe, being transparent, being available. People can see you and relate and connect with you. Uh, the light language is very powerful, but it's nice to see the human being and the spirit in your broadcasts. Thank you. Yeah. You know, and it definitely, I love, I love being able to share the energies with everyone and yeah, it is, it's a courageous thing to do, but I, I really want people to show, you know, be who they want to be and show the world that because the more authentic you are, the better you're going to be perceived by everyone. And so yes, loving yourself so much that you can show the world who you are and what you're about and i love that yeah thank you 
You're welcome. I, I, I had, I often get these little quirky, you know, things that come down from spirit, no, the spiritual marketing department, I think. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> they said today, they said, you know, before, um, first there's me, then there's we, you know, it's almost like humanity, um, has to go through the me to get to the we, because I feel like your broadcasts are all about us and we and sharing. It's the first thing you talk when I said to you, hey, I love your broadcast. Like, oh, wow, uh, it's, it's great I can share this. You know, it's, a, it's, it's, it's very much a, what I call a, a we attitude, you know, and I think that's the antithesis of, you know, stardom or, you know, look at me or I'm being a star, you know, star, um, to be really, uh, to have that intention where what you're doing and everything that you're doing is for the greater good, I think is amazing. I think it's nourishing for the soul. And I think it's, instead of, you know, doing it to get fed, it's, it's, it's from other people, you know, energetically, because a lot of people who are, you know, gurus or put themselves in that can, can tend to want to feed off their, their audience. You know, for me, when I turn up to do this, you know, I feel fed. It's, 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 it's definitely something's pouring like you, you know, when you said the love light language helps to, to drop you into your heart. It's like coming through. And then because at the end of it, you're sharing it, you too feel amazing and fed and, you know. Yes. Well, it, um, I, I, you know, it's funny because I always had a lot of fears about being viewed by the public. So it's forced me to really look, work through those. Um, and transform those aspects of myself. And I love, you know, it's just really fulfilling to be able to help a large group of people and to give the information that I know is so important and, and, and everything that I bring forward for people, I've really used it on myself, so I know that it worked. So being able to share that, it's, it's oh, I'm so grateful because it is so fulfilling for me. Yeah, it's it's great. I didn't know you had fears about sharing yourself with the public, though. Can you tell me more about? That? I'm sure. Look, I I feel like a lot of leaders that are the future leaders of high vibrational thinking are watching this, and 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 maybe you know could benefit from hearing a bit of your story on that. Yeah, absolutely. So I've had a few lives where I've been persecuted for speaking my truth. Um, that I've had to work through those issues. So in the throat chakra um, and where I had been judged. So I've worked through the issues on the crown chakra and where I just didn't want to become famous and then became viewed by other people. So, it's, you know, the Pleiadian princess life as two, where I was on the light council and, you know, <laughs> in that life, I just wanted to work with children. And so I didn't want to be on the light counselor or take on that responsibility. So definitely those fears, um, as soon as people started recognizing me, those fears started coming up and gave me a beautiful opportunity to go, okay, well, this is happening definitely for a reason. So I love myself so much that I release any fear associated with being viewed or judged by others. <laughs> so that's yeah. great. I love that. Yeah, I, I can totally relate, you know, um, I would have to say in 2004 and 2003, I healed numerous past lives that were based on being, stepping into my light and being killed for it. So, you know, um, ultimately for me, the decision had to come to a place of, I need to do what I'm doing no matter what. And that could mean that I'm assassinated or that could mean that I lose everything or that I don't end up with somebody who um, loves me in a love relationship or my kids hate me or my family cuts me off, you know, that I need to do it you know, for my own um, enlightenment that, that then that contributes back into the whole, you know. Um, I need to do it without relying on it to be my income. I need to do it without um, any acceptance whatsoever. Um, from society, um, maybe they can't even relate to the level of enlightenment. And that's fine too. And to not be in any judgment around that. So for me, whew, like that's a lot of levels to get to in myself, to then transcend 
Yeah. Absolutely. And it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage to speak your truth in front of people, you know, so definitely. And courage, another vibration that's in the heart. So, you know, and when we're coming from the heart, we have that extra boost to face to face anything. So, yes. <laughs> I'm glad that you, I'm so glad that you do share with the world. I'm really glad. I'm very grateful because I've watched you come a long way too. And it's been beautiful to watch. I think one of my biggest things, I was reflecting on it today and maybe people can relate to this. Um, when I'd organized an event, like a physical event where people had to turn up for a workshop or those kind of things, never seemed to um, generate lots and lots or it never felt, for me, never felt like enough of an audience, you know. And I was reflect reflecting on that. <laughs> don't want to put, I don't want to sound negative towards my smaller audience, you know, but it just, I have to be honest, it never felt like it was enough for me. And the gift in that, or the issue in that, that's transformed into the gift, is that spirit was trying to send me messages that my message is global, my message is not local. My message is for those who are local who want to tune in globally. <laughs> um, so, it, and that's where I have to be polished or where I have to skill up or I have to be um, to make myself accessible. So therefore, the the doors that weren't opening and, and even to the point where I had, I, like, I, I, re, I would say to my husband, I, I really hate organising events. Would somebody just, just organise these events for me and I'll just turn up because I just hate organising events. And it was even the hate around organising the event was really my intuition saying, you're not meant to be doing this yet. Like, I was just thinking it was like, I just don't like events, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. but there's something more. There's something more. Yeah, like I, I just, my feeling is, is that I would rather do one light enlightened conversation that is there for, the, for all of time, that can be accessed by millions of people, not get paid anything for it, to know that the message is of what I'm meant to be talking about, my energy and sharing my energy is out there, like live in the, in the, in the globe, out there, out there. Um, I feel for me, I was reflecting on it today, being in a workshop, having 20 people or 30 people in the room, just all 65, because there were some events that were a bit bigger. Um, it almost felt like, I know we're all connected in unity and that vibration keeps going, but it almost felt like the gold, like we had moments of gold, like it would just be like mind-blowingly, like you just go, oh my God, the whole world needed to witness that. They were just kind of almost like it felt like lost um, or the opportunity was lost. So for me, I feel like I've really hit my groove with, yeah, this is what I meant to be doing. Um, who knows where we'll go, but I don't really mind because this is what I'm meant to be doing yet. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and connecting with, you know, other people who share the same message. And so it's like with every soul that you touch, with every individual person you touch, they go and they touch, you know, share that message with someone else. And so that it's a beautiful process. And via the internet now, I mean, what a great tool that instantly we can share a message or instantly we can share a thought or an inspiration with everyone on the planet. So the internet, wow. Yeah. Very, very helpful. Very, very helpful. And so necessary for this time. Yeah. And so you, you've worked um, in our um, article that we, we talked about, you, you, you've worked as a psychic detective. And that's, that, that, that's very, um, I guess, from my point of view, I'm curious about that kind of work because, yeah, like sometimes it can come from that place of people are afraid of what's going on or people um, it can be very positive too, like people want to get an answer towards what, why something happened. But mm -hmm. I guess like the things that come up for me are like, the, you know, the limitations around that, like when you get the answer, it's almost like that's when the work begins, the soul work or the spirit work. Do you know what I'm talking about? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And so with my psychic detective work, um, it's, it's, it's wonderful to give the answers to people, even if it's maybe not what they want to hear. That's, that's what they want is the truth. 
but at the same time, because of the legalities, you know, um, as far as finding evidence and things like that, I've worked with quite a few detectives that were just, oh, they were so close, but couldn't get a warrant to search the property or, you know, et cetera, et cetera, that it makes it a little bit more difficult, but um, it's definitely, you know, the ones that I've worked on, the people have actually Oh yeah, so the ones that I've worked on, um, uh, the people have passed um, in whatever the situation was. And so being able to get the answers of what really happened from them and being able to help them cross, a lot of times um, they won't want to go move, move forward until their case is solved. So um, it's, it's very rewarding, but a little difficult to look and see um, the, the harsh things that happen to people so yes yeah and I think sometimes people get um like the family members get caught up in a lot of blame or um they think that if they know how a person passed that they, it will help them with their grief like coming to terms with the loss but um I think that sometimes the relationship needs healing um rather than what happened needs to be found out and sometimes it needs to be found out because that's part of the whole process of course you know, for whatever reason it, there's there's another another whole agenda of learning like even going through court and you know all of that could be in that person's mm -hmm. um you know life path that they need to go through that process and there needs to th things need to happen to challenge them perhaps in their own belief lots of things but i i think what what i would like to sort of speak to is the fact that we can be at peace um, with the loss of whoever is has has whether it's a child and, and this you often see this you know the child has gone we can still be at peace maybe that's harder for us to achieve because of circumstances that a may be unknown or b may be known maybe the child was murdered maybe maybe raped and, and, and harder for us to then come to a place of peace, harder for us to come to a place of love and reconnect to that soul. But I think if we do that work, if we as people who have gone through a process of loss um, do that work, um, then I, I, I actually do believe that that helps the situation. It can't hurt the situation. It helps the situation immensely. Would you agree on that? And so many people blame themselves when, when a, you know, the majority that wasn't in so reuniting the daughter with the mother, it was healing for both of them because, you know, she she didn't want to go because her mother was blaming herself and she goes mom it's not my fault it's not it's not my fault it's not your fault this is something that happened but stop stop blaming yourself you know because you turned your back for two seconds so it's definitely a liberating process for everyone and you know i found that a lot of the times the dead will have just as many problems as the living and so it's healing on both sides of the veil, I guess, that, that occurs, so. Yeah, I agree, 100%. And the kids that have, or, or anybody who, who has passed, still need guidance or help or, or connection. They still need that. And if you've, got, if you've got everybody focusing on what happened and why did it happen, it's almost like it takes away the energy of that connection um, or the opportunity to, to, to forge that connection stronger or help that soul or what have you. So I think there's a lot of power in what we're talking about that people might, you know, get caught up in the, you know, in the, in the, the who, the, what, when, or the, why and how. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The world and all that. And um, I know for me, I, um, back in 2001, my nieces, my niece and two nephews were murdered. And so for me, a lot of my mediumship abilities came through from connecting with them. Uh, I hadn't really had any mediumship stuff going on before that. 
um, and I look at their their actual deaths, if you like, or the loss as a gain, because if I hadn't opened myself up to allowing myself to communicate with them, I certainly wouldn't be the medium I am today. I wouldn't be able to understand it. The, the relationship that I have with them when they were so little, they were only seven, five and three, but my relationship with them grew so exponentially and their consciousness grew exponentially. They used to sit in on counselling sessions with me um, as a counsellor at the time. So I had lots of people coming in. Um, they used to sit and listen to what I was saying to my clients. So they were still learning from me and how they could come to terms with their lot, you know, with, with what happened to them. So, yeah, I can That's really beautiful. relate. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I love that. And, you know, a lot of people think, oh, okay, well, as soon as we go, we cross over, go into the light, whatever you want to call it, that we're magically healed of everything we've ever been through. And well, we know that it's, that's, that's not true, but you know, that's, I like that. That is so beautiful because it's wonderful to know that we can still be connected to our loved ones, you know, in every moment, the moment we put our attention and focus on them, their energy immediately, their consciousness immediately comes around us. So it's definitely like, I haven't heard of anything like that before. So it, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing, an amazing concept. And it was very necessary for you to go through that loss to open up that ability and to realize, you know, sometimes if you don't know you have it, you can't, you can't use it and work on it. Yeah, totally. And it was totally unexpected too. I was, I was, yeah, um, literally on a, on a plane to, to go down to attend the funeral and, and everything. And I closed my eyes and they were all there. Like, I, I, I was just like, what? <laughs> I was, um, yeah, it was the weirdest and also the most amazing uh, moment uh, to have three little beings looking back at you going, hello, we're here, what do we do? You know, they didn't know. Yeah. No, I didn't know either. But I, I could extend that auntie love and compassion and, and that's all I did really. That's all I had to do. And I think, wouldn't it be interesting if, if more people realised that, is that through loss, if we realise we're not real, if we learn that we're really not disconnected, that, that, that our job is to reconnect uh, to to what they represent to us at, on an energetic level, um, and to reconnect with that, and that that then becomes the blessing of the loss because we've learned how to do that, and I yeah. certainly did. Yeah, yeah, I certainly did. Absolutely, and it's so true. You know, being able to look at even situations like that from another viewpoint and knowing that even the person that it's, it was all done out of love, every act, even the cruelest of things are done out of love. And that's how, you know, that's when we're our higher selves, when we want to experience the duality, we make contracts with people who love us. And so, you know, there's a purpose for everything. So I think that helps, will help people as well to know that even the worst things that do happen and the things that we really, we really judge and we get so angry or so hurt or so put ourselves into a victim of looking at it, you know, and knowing that everything was done out of love and that it was previously agreed upon is a blessing and that all of the lessons that you get from going through trauma, uh, you know, just, just like that. I mean, I, I bet it was just like, it reminds me of being a child and just looking, laying in bed and looking, <laughs> looking out and seeing spirits all around my bed, you know, coming closer. It's just a very like, whoa, how did this happen? And then, yeah, in 2012, when I contacted you and I'm like, am I a light worker? <laughs> You're like, yes. <laughs> right after that, it was, I was seeing, you know, higher dimensional ETs everywhere. So it was definitely a, a, a drastic change but you know your your divinity and your higher self which has always been within will only bring to you what you are ready for and what you can deal with 
Yeah, exactly. And I, I mean, I look at it like a blessing and, and um, um, not a lot of people know this, but it was actually my brother who put the children to sleep. Um, and the reason why he did that was because he was afraid that the person that his ex-partner was with would, was going to harm his children in a way that he was abused as a kid, which he was sexually abused as a kid. And so even though it looks like you know um i mean we never saw it coming either so it was complete absolute complete shock but you know it's one of those things where um if you're looking at compassion and if you're looking at sort of not pity but just looking at it from a place of compassion my brother was obviously struggling with fear um and and with feeling like he couldn't protect his kids and so it's kind of you know not justifying that behavior but i'm speaking to that part of you know, us that we can actually understand where fear really is a cry for love. Because what, because what he wanted was obviously to protect his kids, and he couldn't do that. And you know what? He survived. He tried to put himself out too, but he survived. So he has to live with that. So that's kind of another level of compassion that mm -hmm. you know we get to extend out as well. Um, but it's yeah, it's it's interesting the cat the cat catacly catalysts for our psychic abilities and and that was definitely my big one like without a doubt um i was counseling i was loving counseling i was really enjoying it but spirit just really ramped it up and just said you know what yeah you're a great counselor but um, you, you know, you've got other things that we want you to do here and you're ca quite capable of doing them. So this is the, this is, this is actually where it's going. Um, this is how you're getting there, which is really fascinating to look at, back at it now, uh, 15 years ago now, but. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny how spirit will go, nope, you know, a little adjustments at a time that lead us to where we need to be and, and nope, you're meant for something more. So it's, I definitely get that. <laughs> Because I mean, I, you know, five or six years ago, if, if somebody would have told me you're going to be a psychic medium and be doing everything I'm doing now, I would have laughed. <laughs> I would have laughed and been like, okay, I don't think so. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, yeah. So people that are actually watching the enlightened conversations that have absolutely no, no, it's not on their trajectory at all. You just never know. And, you know, keeping an open mind about where you're meant to be is the most important thing ever because you just never know where you're going to be led what 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 is required to stretch you i mean that's the question isn't it and and where where are you capable of stretching you know what i have absolutely no idea i think that's the most enlightened point of view to come from um because i'm 46 and i'm sure there's well i hope fingers crossed there's lots of years ahead of me and so therefore that hey, 15 years ago that happened and then here I am. So what's, what's 15 years ago now? Um, what's going to happen for me? What's going to be my stretch? Who knows? Am I going to be a stretch? Is something going to happen to me so that I'm a stretch for other people somehow? Because that can happen, like John Lennon's death or, um, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people learn a great deal through his death or, you know, someone being incarcerated, lots of people learn through that. So who knows? But I think not having fear and just being willing to turn up is 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 what's required just handing it over to god surrendering to the universe and saying hey well here i am what do I, what do, what's required for me yeah and the most amazingly empowering thing is that we are in control of all of it we are creators and the more that we're in this moment right now acting with love speaking with love thinking with love following our dreams following where our heart leads us you know that's how we create our own futures. And so being able to put yourself back into your own power and go, you know, I can do this. And what type of, like on earth, what type of life do I want to create for myself? And it's exciting. It's so exciting and so inspiring to be able to take the driver's seat in your own life. And to have the courage to be responsible for everything that you might not be happy with, knowing that, you know, it's never been out of your control and that you can change it. And it's by unconditionally loving yourself in every now moment that really will shape the future. 
you're not only your leader, but those around you as well. Exactly, everybody's. Well, on that note, my love, I I feel like you've just said it all. Well done. (laughs) You've just summarised the whole of existence and what we should do. I I just love how you did that so effortlessly. Um, and I would, I would just love you to now share with anybody who wants to contact you, how they can reach you so that they, you know, they can follow you, they can listen to you and they can benefit from, from your beautiful open hearted sharing. Yes, absolutely. So, um, you can find me on enlightened journeys on Facebook and I do readings. And the amazing thing about my sessions is that I work with my boyfriend who's very, very gifted. And so we, I pull the information of anything that could be blocking you in this moment and my boyfriend clears it. So it is beautiful. And then we can, and then I look again to see if your future has shifted. So we offer sessions and my YouTube channel is also called Enlightened Journeys. So you can watch my videos on there. I am working on creating light language music with binaural beats and really bringing forth a tool for humanity to instantaneously lift their vibration into whatever the intention is. So, um, yeah, it's like I, I, it's a beautiful thing because I've used it on myself and it works and it's like, Oh, you know, I feel like maybe today I need a little bit more love in my life or loving myself a little bit more. And then you can put on, you can put on the light language with the binaural beats and instantly it raises your vibration. So, Yes, exciting things. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you so much for um, providing us with a wonderful article for Lightworker Advocate magazine on the 12 Everyday Lightworker Principles. Um, I know that you're one of the first people to um, provide um, the feedback on the Everyday Lightworker Bible and, and, and how that was, you know, really working for you those principles working for you and i just want to thank you so much for that so you can read more about jessica um in like with her advocate magazine and her sharing about that and also um we have our q a that we welcome conversation and discussion and that's happening next friday um just just for those of you that are in australia it's just the timing is is different obviously for the states but for, for australia at brisbane time it'll be Friday the 15th um, of December, and that's at 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. So Jessica and I'll be running a Q&A from my live feed on my Michelle Lightworker Facebook public page. Um, for those of you who are in LA, uh, it's, it's, it's a Thursday evening, so um, it's probably around 6 p.m. And I think for New York and, and that kind of stuff, it's, it's getting towards 11 or or whatever, just depending on the daylight savings times. So, yeah, tune on in and, and we'd love to share the conversation, share the enlightenment with you around anything that we've talked about or if my, there might be something else coming up for you want to talk about and um, even share on. You might not have a question. That's cool. It's not about having to have a question. It's more about sharing an enlightened conversation. So thank you so much, Jessica, for, for a wonderful you. today. And I've really enjoyed myself. It's been beautiful. Me too. Thank you. So lots of love and light to you, sister. And uh, I look forward to connecting with you on the Q&A. Me too. I'm excited. And I looked up the magazine. It's amazing. I'm very excited. Yay. Awesome. See you next time, everybody. Lots of love to you. Big love. Bye. Lots of love.